Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew Fraley. I'm the founder of BreakpointTrades.com. We've been bringing you advanced technical analysis, market commentary, trade ideas, and mechanical trading algorithms since 2003 for individual traders and professional institutions, which I consult with on a weekly basis. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. This is a newsletter recording for from Breakpoint Trades for Sunday, July 17th, 2022. It's about 4 p.m. in the afternoon, and I hope everyone has had a nice weekend so far. If you're new to Breakpoint Trades, these newsletters are very comprehensive, the weekend newsletters especially, because we cover everything from a top-down approach. You know, we look at the major indexes, we look at the large time frames, monthly, yearly charts, all the way down to 15 and five minute charts. We review important indicators, bonds, major sectors, commodities, currencies, precious metals, crypto, and I usually follow up with some trade ideas. So we got a lot of discussion. I'm recording this as a YouTube video today as well. You know, our standard newsletters are web-based and are emailed out to our subscribers, but I'm also recording this as a YouTube video. That's what you see here is our back end. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and move this up because it's not really needed for this recording and move it over here. Anyway, as you can see, this newsletter is divided into nine major sections. So we got a lot to cover here. Just a forewarning, if you're new here, this video will probably take upwards of around an hour to complete, okay? Otherwise, you know, my key observations for the market, last week was a very choppy consolidation week, which we favored. You know, it was best to buy support, it was best to sell resistance, things like that, all right? These consolidation sideways patterns tend to chop traders up, and that's what happened last week. But we did a very good job calling that, all right? Now, the for the week, the major indexes end up losing some ground. The S&P lost about 1%, NASDAQ 1.5%, Russell similar, um, despite the recovery we had from Thursday and Friday's big trend gap up rally day. All right, now the key support is essentially Thursday's lows. If you're long the indexes, quite honestly, that's a good place for a you know wide stop for a swing trade at this point. All right, like I said, even though Thursday, with Thursday's reversal and gap and go on Friday, the index is still closed inside their coil-like patterns. All right, what we favor at the moment barring just a meltdown right here from, you know, when the week opens, is we favor these patterns to break out to the upside on these, of these patterns. So for the, for example, the S&P 4020, there's an open gap there, that would be a logical target. Before that, you have the 50 day move on average. Earnings season is starting in a big way this week. That's obviously gonna be key focus, especially these larger cap stocks. What effect is that strong US dollar going to have on their earnings, okay? Also, keep an eye on the dollar. It's been ridiculously strong, but we did see some pullback late last week, and it's, it got pretty parabolic. Here's the things that stand out to me. Number one, the coil-like patterns on the indexes. Um, semiconductors and technology, I want to keep an eye on those. Biotech, I still like it. Remember, I liked this a month ago, and it's been a really nice long. It still looks decent. XLE Energy, um, has a falling, exhibits a falling wedge on its two hour time frame, And it's had a second retest of its 200 day moving average. So that looks uh, bullish. Cryptocurrencies, keep an eye on those as always. This week, they're kind of sideways on the weekend. Japanese yen, it has been absolutely destroyed this year, but it does have a falling wedge and I'm watching for a potential long trade via FXY, the ETF. Um, I'm gonna be monitoring precious metal stocks. You know, they got to have a good reversal for me to get interested there. And uh, believe it or not, Netflix actually has a nice basing pattern. All right, let's move on. So before we get into the rest of the stuff, a lot of this stuff is buried. I cover later. But again, these are what we favor for the week. I know these charts are a little fuzzy. They're zoomed. They're shrunk. But this is the S&P 60 minute. Here's a... IWM Russell daily. So this is kind of what we favor. You see this sideways chop we had the previous week. We made that higher low last Thursday. So we kind of favor this A, B, C up, at least to fill this gap on the S&P. Here on the daily IWM, you can see the same coil. You can see how that Thursday's 
pivot low there would be your important area. If we can bust out of this coil, there's a gap on the IWM too. So that's what we favor. Again, I'll cover this when we get to the S&P and charts further on, but I just wanted to show that early on because it's going to take a bit to get there. Next, let's talk about our systems, our reversion to mean systems. They've kicked butt this year. So right here shows the bear long subsystem that we give trade notifications out for ES futures. Again, you don't have to trade futures, guys. Don't be put off by that. You can simply trade one of the ETFs for SPY, you know, like SPY or SSO, UPRO, whatever. So you can see this has had some nice trades recently. Again, bear, it's called bear long because it primarily does long trades in a bear market, which we're in. So this went long last week on Wednesday and it's up nicely at this point. So congrats if you took that trade. Remember, we have 21 subsystems. This is just one of them. Okay, and we, we send out trade notifications to all our subscribers uh, whenever these sy systems do a trade, whenever they enter a trade, when they exit a trade. So if you want like a handheld, you don't want to think, which I don't suggest you don't think, but if you want to literally be told, follow a system, these are good systems. They do best in bear markets because of the volatility and they've done well this year. We've had, you know, something like uh, 30 trade signals on SPY. We've had 30 trade signals on ES. Next, image number four, here's the uh, trades for the e that I've sent out, the live trades for the ES systems this year, just since the beginning of the year. And you can see there's been 29 trades. For SPY, there's been 30 trades. We have that open trade from the bear long here. So on 7.13 last week on Wednesday. So it's open, 30, 38.04 was the entry. And uh, it's up about 60 points. I show the trades as MES. That's the micro features. If you have a bigger account, you could do ES mini. And of course, again, you don't have to do features. You can trade, you know, the SPY related ETFs, guys. I just give you the signals and you execute the trades with whatever instrument fits your style and risk profile. All right. I have some big stuff that I'm working on in the systems, hopefully a few months from now. I would, I'm planning to have a basket of about 10 ETFs that I'm going to send trade notifications to. Quite honestly, that could be its own website, kind of thinking something like end of day systems, something like that. All right, let's move back to the general market. So item number five shows the index sector table, what transpired last week on Friday and for the week. Okay. So you can see big, nice gain on Friday. It, that helped the indexes a lot. We still closed down for the week though, but we had that gap and go on Friday. It's a trend day and uh, we reversed the morning lows on Thursday. As far as the major market sectors, we've been broad-based rally on Friday. As you can see, every single sector here, about 20 sectors were up. For the week, it kind of mixed as you'd imagine. More down than up, energy is pretty weak, but I do think that's an interesting area to watch. Currencies, US dollar still up 1% for the week, as you can see. And, uh, but you know, we'll keep an eye on that. It did have a big pullback on Friday. Otherwise, uh, cryptocurrencies, um, they were up for the week. Now this doesn't show what they're doing on the weekend, which I think they're kind of mixed to slightly down. Keep an eye on crypto because the market tends to move with that, obviously. Commodities had a decent rally on Friday but big losses for the week. That dollar does not help things. Look at the move down in gasoline. That's good. You drive a car. And uh, crude oil, you know, down almost 6.9%. The general CRB down 3.8%. Look at the move down in the ags. 12.9%, 10% for wheat and coffee, corn, agriculture, copper down 8.2%. But I do believe if the market does try to rally here that these commodities are due to have some sort of bounce back. Precious metals have been smashed again. I am going to watch this area for potential signs. You want to see the stocks outperform and uh, bonds for the week. High yield corporate, TLT, TLC especially was up and the rates were down. Next, item number six shows the economic news calendar. Not too much on the docket this week. Remember, the big thing is we have earnings season, and it really begins on earnest with Alcoa. I think that's on Wednesday. All right. Next, let's go and move on to the index charts, and then we're going to 
move down to the S&P and the other indexes specifically. So here's a monthly view of the major indexes, the Dow at the top, S&P here in the middle, NASDAQ, NDX, IWM. So pretty obvious here, you know, this goes back to the early 2000s. We had that bull market, which began in early 2009. We had a general, you know, uptrending slope of this bull market into that 2020. But then, as I've discussed before, after that, you know, initial COVID sell-off, it was a hard correction. It wasn't a bear market. You know, with all the stimulus money, all the, you know, whatever, um, everything went parabolic. So that last previous bull market ended with a blow off and you can see how the slope changed overall general slope projection here in the Dow. And then look at, look at the, how much it increased. The slope essentially doubled. So otherwise the Dow S and P sort of finding some support near their lower Bollinger bands, which you'd expect, but is the bear market over by all means? No guys, by all means, no, even on a decent rally, these middle Bollinger bands will meet be long-term resistance. I think this bear market has the potential to last for maybe several years even to work all that off. Think about it, guys. All this pumping, all this stuff that the Fed has done for the last 15, 20 years, do you really think it's worked off in six months, especially with all the debt we have? Next, chapter eight here is the weekly view. So the market made a low essentially four or five weeks back, and we've been chopping around here. You know, we're still unable to get above the nine week EMA. That's what the moving average here is. We'll see if we can bust up through that or not. If we can't, if we were to move down, this could be a bear flag and we would sell off again to these lower lows. Again, ultimately I'm expecting much, much lower prices guys on the indexes like the S and P this year, probably the low three thousands. But you know, I'm thinking at the moment it, it won't be until the fall sometime. Next. Chapter nine, here's the daily view of the indexes, five key major indexes. So again, you can see these sideways patterns we're in. Here's the Dow, here's the S&P, you know, we, we had a nice rally last Friday, but we did not break out of these ranges. Here's the NASDAQ 100, here's the NASDAQ, and uh, here's the IWM small cap. So again, we're still in these patterns. I do favor kind of a move up out of the pattern this week okay whether we get it or not you know if we just were to sell off immediately and really dump hard that could negate that but that's what i favor at this very moment okay next let's move on to the s p 500 first and we're going to start with the top down picture so here's the monthly view again we've been calling this since the beginning of the year that the s p and the market put in a fifth wave into that bull market. A lot of Elliott waivers were calling for this to be some sort of fourth wave pullback. We were not in that camp. And I think most people now are in the bear camp, but we were in this camp, bear market, way back in early, early January, late December. This is your monthly chart. It's a logarithmic chart. You can see your long-term trend line here, right around 3,200 on this log chart on this channel. 38% FIB. All bear markets, when I looked in the past, retraced at least a 38% of the previous bull market. So that would be 32.30 on the S&P. But I think we go lower than that over time. Some other supporting evidence that support a bear market, this simple 14 stochastic. You know, in bear markets, this will tend to dip below 50 and then stay below 50. Okay, In bull markets, during strong corrections, it finds support near 50 like you see here. You see how this is similar to back in 2008. Next, chapter 11. Here's that another chart of the S&P going back to 1997, and it focuses on that 14 link stochastic, a monthly chart. Again, it's just a very simple concept, but very effective. Again, you can see whenever that 14 stochastics lost the 50% area, you can see the tech bubble crash, the 2008 time frame, and of course, now recently, uh, this year, those were bear markets. And in very strong corrections, like back here in um, 98, I think that was the Asian crisis. The 14 stochastics found support at 50%. And of course, the last you know 12 years, it's found support at 50%. Next, let's look at another simple chart. So here's a chart of the Dow going back to the 1920s. 
with the CCI, but with the nine EMA. This is a yearly chart, so each candle is represents one year. So this is just a very, very, very simple concept, guys. In bear markets, the indexes will pull back below their nine-year EMA, and I show examples here. Every bear market that happens, okay. Obviously, you know, in the 1930s it was in a big way, but every time, you know, in the 70s, decent correction below the nine-year EMA. You know, a little bit here on the 2000s. That's the Dow, the the Nasdaq, and S and P were much worse there course, obviously 2008. But look how far we are still from the nine-year EMA. Think of this as your mean. Well, even that March 2020 time frame, you could see it was way below that nine-year EMA at one point before it recovered. But don't you think just from a simple reversion of mean there in this bear market, this would be destined to go at least to the nine EMA, if not lower? Seems logical to me. Next. Trevor 13, here's a zoomed in view of the S&P and I'm just showing back to 1990. This should illustrate the point. So here's the 90 year EMA, each candle sticks one year and you can see pulled back below that in, in this bear market, obviously in the 2008 timeframe. And look how much, despite the big sell off this year, about 20%, look how far we are still away from the 90 EMA from this candle low here. The 90 EMA is around 3,200, okay? But if you notice in all the previous bear markets, you undercut that nine EMA. So let's say, you know, the S&P goes kind of below, well below it. That would put you in the 2000s. Again, that's your bigger picture. I think eventually during this bear market, price will revert below that nine EMA. Okay, not right now at the moment, but eventually. Next. Let's zoom down to the lower time frames. Chart number 14, here's the daily S&P. So the beginning of the year, you can see the, you know, downward project progression we've had. We had a trade low in mid-June there, initial rally to the 20-day moving average. You know, as I say, stated, the indexes are in these consolidation patterns. What we favor is a move out of the pattern, like I show here. There's an obvious open gap right back here from early June. It's at 4020. That would be a logical target. And, you know, if the market were to have some sort of complex move up, it may even be able to work up into these areas. Okay. But if it gets up into here, I think that is one hell of a shorting opportunity. All right. But initially, we were favoring kind of a move up into here. If it were to fail and just sell off, you know, from the get go, then we'd favor a move down to the lower trend line, testing some lower areas. But for now, we kind of fa we favor this upward move. Next, chart 15. Here's a very clean daily chart without any indicators, just simple price action. Also, this represents symmetry. Notice how your symmetry, this initial move from this 36.36 low to the 36.45 high, you add that same line here. Notice how it conveniently matches this gap. Otherwise, these are your longer term resistance areas above. Next, chart 16, here's the two hour time frame. essentially shows you the same exact thing I just showed. We favor kind of a move up into here. Then, you know, I think we get another consolidation and I'm hoping we can even get a, then after a consolidation, then get another move up into here. Next, chart 17, here's the 60 minute chart, just showing you essentially the same thing, just on a fractal. ABC, 4020 is that gap. Next, Trevor 18, 30 minute view, the exact same thing. Next, Trevor 10, here's a, or 19, here's a 10 minute chart. You can see how Friday we had that gap and go. And it still exhibits kind of a flag pattern, but we gapped right over this resistance trend line. Finally, Trevor 20, here's a five minute view, shows you the action the last couple of days to get Thursday morning, the market recovered nicely here. And this line in cyan color, that's the VWAP. That's a good intraday guide if you're watching the market intraday. So these retests of the VWAP were good buy opportunities as day trades. But still looks pretty bullish here, just on a five minute. Next, moving on to the KISS charts, chart number 21. Here's the weekly S&P KISS system. It actually shows along here, believe it or not with a stop at 36.37, okay? Now, before you get too excited, guys, I don't like these 
we're in a bear market and these KISS trend systems are designed to keep you invested in a bull market. A lot of times these buy signals in bear markets really don't give you much. They give you a tiny win or a whipsaw. So I would trade on lower time frames, but it is quite interesting. It's showing along here with a stop. Next. Chapter 22 is the daily kiss trend. It obviously has not went back long. It's not going to go back long sometime until it gets, say, well above this ATR, which by that time you're starting to get overbought, right? Just kind of like back here, the system tried along in March. It was really better not to chase it. You maybe you got a little bit, and then once you got out, you were flat to break even. So next. Chapter 23, here's the cycles. Now the cycles here, again, we're keeping an eye on these. these. These cycles have been pretty good. These are the dotted lines, the support cycles in cyan, the resistance cycles in uh, purple. So daily, we got to clear this resistance. On the half day, we had a price fell into this ATR. That's the average true range of the last 14 days. It's a weighted ATR. So it gives more weight into the current day. But we found support there and we had a convenient buy cycle support cycle so we bounced off that so to me again this area is kind of your critical support next jabber 24 here's I, uh, qqqs daily you can see similar pattern to the other indexes we have this coil like pattern i favor an upside move out of it next jabber 25 here's the two hour time frame you can see the coil a little better with some fibs next Chapter 26, there's a 15-minute chart. You can see how we had that move, nice move last week, nice trigger over that downtrend line. Next. Chapter 27, here's the daily kiss. It's not long. It's very similar look to the S&P. It's not going to go long until you get well over this ATR, which by that time, I think it's kind of late. Remember, we're in a bear market, so these kiss trend systems are best in, bear, in bull markets. That's what they were designed for, to keep you invested in bull markets, which we're not in. Next, Trevor 28, here's the cycles. Very similar look to the S&P cycles. You have that same bounce off the ATR on the half day and the um, support cycle. Next, Trevor 29, IWM small cap, same deal. You have the same kind of coil-like sideways pattern. We're open for an upside break, maybe to fill this gap. Finally, Chapter 30, here's IWM on the 60-minute time frame. You can see this coil-like pattern. Again, same thing as I showed in the daily above. And you can see the open gap up here. Next. Chapter uh, 31, here's the VIX. VIX has been melting down. It's now near its lower Bollinger Bands, 200-day moving average. So obviously, you got to watch it there. That is an area where it could try to bounce. But um, we'll see. Obviously, the VIX could not get above this resistance area that we t discussed. Remember back here, a lot of folks were looking, technicians were looking for the VIX. They said, we're not going to bottom in the market until the VIX goes to, you know, spikes to 40 and 50. And clearly that did not happen. We were all over that. Next. Chapter 32, here's a yearly or um, a weekly chart of the VIX. One thing it, I noticed, it's forming a coil pattern. Perhaps it pulls down to the lower portion of this pattern and then bounces. That would give the market a little more rally before then pulling back again. Something to consider. Next. Chapter 33, just some of these indicators I've discussed. I'm not going to go through a bunch of indicators tonight. So here's the um, S&P versus the inverse 10-day put call, and you can see how this has been a very useful indicator. Whenever you see divergences, like the S&P making higher highs, but this indicator making lower highs, great sell signals, warnings. The opposite, when the S&P is making lower lows, but this indicator is making the divergent higher low, it's a, it's a positive, and you can see how that worked. Next, chapter 34, here's XLE to the USO. That's energy to USO. I pointed this out over a week ago that energy stocks have been outperforming relative to the crude oil, and that's a positive for both. So I'm watching for potential bounce er in those areas. Next, let's move to bonds, chapter 35, high yield corporate. Beautiful examples of support and resistance. You can see how 
strong of a downtrend it's been this year. Markets tend to move with this, but you can see it lost support back here, per formed a perfect double bottom in late June, textbook. And on Friday, took out this resistance area. It was prior support turn resistance. So we took that out. That's a positive. We had the 50-day moving average, but you know, if if high yield corporate could work its way up to this downtrend line at least, that would give the market, you know, potentially some room to rally. Next. Chapter 36, here's that 60 minute chart we were showing the all last week, and you can see it, it looked bullish last week. We talked about that, and it finally broke out on Friday. It looks higher still. There's a gap back here, too, to what could be a target. Next, let me zoom out here a little bit. So here's the yield curve, the 10-year divided by the two-year. As you know, it is strongly negative. So this is one of the best indicators of a future recession. So we got a recession coming, guys, whether it's here now or what, but one is coming. It's been strongly negative here. In fact, it's below the 2007 lows. Next, chapter 38, here's another look at the yield curve. Instead of the uh, the division, I'm doing the difference here. 10 year minus the two year gives you the same thing. But it really shows you here, when you do it this way, how inverted it is, below 2007, 2006 lows. Next, chapter 39, here's the 10 year treasury yield again. We've spotted that black candle doji one, two, three, four, five weeks ago. We called for a high in rates and rates have pulled back there. That's also helped the, in, that's helped the yield curve invert because remember, short-term rates are rising, but long-term rates have been pulling back, right? So that's why the yield curve is inverted. You also have this wide moving average ribbon. You know, I talked about how wide this is that needs to be worked off. You know, when the moving averages get too wide, they need to come in and pinch. And the only way that happens is if price pulls back to cause that. And they're still wide here considering how much this is pulled back. Next, chapter 40, here's the 10-year treasury yield. You know, the big picture going back to the early 80s. So again, we did break this 35-year trend line. So that's support. So, you know, ultimately I do expect the rate to find support on this trend line and then have another rally up. So. Interest rates are now going to be up, you know, for many, many years now, guys. You know, think about it. We had interest rates declining for 40 years. We're now on the other side. Next. Chapter 41, there's the daily chart of the 10-year. Next. Chapter 42, here's the uh, TLT 20-year bonds. We broke this trend line a couple weeks back, back-tested it here, perfect you know, technical analysis, break resistance, become support on a back test. This is your, now your resistance. We'll see if we can clear that or not. Next, let's move to market sectors. So this chart here shows you 10 of the major sectors. Like I said, most of the sectors exhibit the same things. We have a lot of them are in these patterns like the indexes. You can see the transports here, this financials, um, XOK, technology, industrials consumer discretionary. So you can see a lot of them have the same patterns, XOU, utilities, it's in a coil. So I'm not going to go over all the individual sectors tonight. We will look at a couple. Chapter 44, here's XLK technology. Again, big decline this year. We did break breach this thin trend line here. 50-day moving average is your resistance now. And uh, otherwise, if you can clear that, you know, Got a long-term resistance here. That's a long way away. Next, chapter 45, here's XLC communications sector. Even though it's called communications sector, remember guys, it contains a lot of the FANG names. Like, and um, so, you know, wherever big tech goes, this usually goes. It's still stuck in this pattern. Next, chapter 46, semiconductors, keeping an eye on this. Last week we favored this to rally and it did. So now we'll see if it can make it up to this area. Next, chapter 47, SOXL, that's the three time long semis. I put this, put this out as a long idea a few weeks back. Beautiful back test of this lower trend line. That was a low risk entry. Let's see. Congrats if you took that. Next, chapter 48, banks. Nice rally on Friday, breaking out of this little pattern. That's positive, but we need follow through. We'll see if we can 
that's your obvious next resistance there. 50 day moving average in red and downtrend line of the channel. Next, chart number 49, XBI Biotech. I liked this back in June. You had a perfect double bottom. Nice rally. I liked it a couple weeks ago as well. Right in here, you had a bull flag, which played out nicely. Zoom in there a little bit. And now it's forming another flag. This to me looks higher. Maybe you can get up to its 200 day moving average over time. Next. Chapter 40, LABU, that's the leverage DTF. So, you know, this still has plenty of room here. Resistance is around that 1150 area. This is your support, which has been holding. Next, Chapter 51, XLE Energy. I warned about a correction back here in early June off this black candle doji, and this marked it. You had a follow through sell off here, which was a bearish evening star pattern and it sold off good. So hope you guys took profits and energy back here. I do think in here, it is time to look at scaling back in. Again, XLE, could it pull back to this area? Potentially it could, but it's a lower risk down in here off the 200 day moving average again, okay? You have some positive divergence on various indicators, stochastic, CCI, MACD's curling up, got a coil on the RSI, next. Chapter 52, here's the two hour time frame. You have this beautiful falling wedge here as well with MACD divergence. This is, shows the symmetry target. So you, you measure the back here, add it to here, would measure up to about 73 initially. Now, if you break symmetry, then I would expect much higher. Next, Chapter 53, DBC commodities, similar look. They've had a hell of a correction from the high back here with that US dollar rallying. It bounced off the 200-day moving average. Again, as long as this stuff is in a bull market still, probably lower risk entry last week. Next, let's look at the bigger charts. So chart 54, here's the weekly. So you can see the weekly. Again, bull market began actually back here in 2020. And it's had a hell of a correction, but I would tend to argue that this is more of a correction in a bull market. This is your long-term support. But, you know, I don't think it's ready to go to highs. This is one wave down, essentially. So maybe you get a rally up this, kind of an ABC, and then you, you'd have a better move, would be my guess. We'll see what plays out. Next, Trevor 55, there's the monthly view. Again, you know, launched out of here and it's pulled back. But if you look at the moving average ribbon, you look at everything here, it just looks like a pullback in a long-term uptrend for now. Next, Charber 56, crude oil, really nice pullback. It is trying to bounce off its 200-day moving average. I do believe crude oil is the lower risk in here if you want to try some of the ETF USO. Next, Charber 57, there's the weekly view of crude oil down almost 7%. This is big support down into this area. Next, Charber 58, natural gas, big rally last week, up 16 0.3%. Nice rally off this area. We warned about the moving average ribbon getting too wide. Remember I just discussed that back here. That led to the correction, but now up again. Next. Chapter 59, natural gas daily bounced perfectly off its 200 day moving average area. Again, that's always a lower risk buy on the first retest. Next. Chapter 60, boil. That's the two time ETF for natural gas. So this was an easy trade, guys. You had a doji back here, black candle, I pointed it out. You got a very really low risk buy off the high of this doji with a stop at the low. Really nice trade if you held it. Next, Chapter 61 copper. This is the weekly chart down another 8.2%. Again, this represents that we're, the, the fact that this is selling off so strongly shows how we're going into some sort of recession. And healthy correction here down to a 61.8 fib. Next, chapter 62, there's the daily chart. Bear flag back here, sell off. Now we do have a doji candlestick. I put a line here because if you get a move over here above this, then you could have a decent bounce. Reversion to mean you have some RSI divergence that would support it. Next. Trevor 63, here's a way to play copper. I'm sure none of you play futures. I don't play copper futures. But JJC, that's the ETF. That would be a way to play it. If you think a bounce is going to occur. 
in copper. Next, chapter 64, DBA agriculture down 3.6%, down near its 38% FIB retracement from the 2020 lows now. Next, chapter 65, there's the monthly view. Again, healthy correction, but you know, still looks like a big correction in a bull market ultimately on the bigger charts. Next, uh, chart verse 66, here's the daily chart of DBA. You have sort of a double bottom here after this big sell-off. Watch to see if you get some support in here. You have a little divergence, RSI, stochastic, some of these indicators. Next, moving on to cryptocurrencies, chart verse 67, Bitcoin. You got to keep an eye on Bitcoin. Again, if this were to, as always, if this were to just dump, that would not be good for the market. The market would sell off, guys. It needs big crypto to hold up here or rally, ideally. Um, the longer this goes, you know, obviously this has a bear flag look. You know, back here was obviously a bear flag. The longer this goes sideways, the more hope is you have some sort of, you know, the less likely it is a bear flag and you get some sort of base. So we'll, again, keep an eye on this. Uh, we'll see what that does this week. Next. Trevor 68, Mara, kind of a stock we've been monitoring. I liked this long a couple weeks ago. Here's an area to monitor as well. Next, Trevor 69, Ethereum. Ethereum now started to break out of its little pattern here, so that's a positive. Next, Trevor 70, Ethereum, ETF, ETHE. We pointed this out last week. You had a little buy signal on Friday or Thursday breaking this little base. I bought a little bit if I kept it. So we'll see if we can get some follow through. Next, let's move to currencies. US dollar, chart for 71. UUP is the ETF for the dollar. Again, it started going parabolic recently and it still hasn't broken that parabolic move, but you know, it did get a little pullback the last day. We'll see what it does this week. Next. Chart for 72, there's the weekly chart. You do have some RSI divergence at the highs but clearly the epitome of strength almost has a big cup and handle look. It's obviously not a cup and handle, but you know, beautiful double bottom back here, which we pointed out you know, a couple years ago. Next, chart for 73, there's the monthly view. You know, this was big support down here around 89. This was resistance at 104 and we've clearly taken that out. Now we were stalling a little bit here, but you know, your next resistance is here. And then of course, would be the 2000, early 2000 highs. Still looks very strong on the monthly. Just a little, got a little overbought. Next, let's look at the Japanese yen, which has been absolutely destroyed. You know, they're still pumping. So here's the weekly charges. Look at this decline. You know, I think we're gonna see a future crisis in Japan and China. That'll be another reason for the market to go down a lot, okay? Next. Chapter 75, there's the monthly view. Again, the concern is you're kind of sort of in this thin zone that it could go down to the 98 levels. By the way, that was that Asian crisis, I think, currency crisis. It is quite oversold here in the short, short term. Next, Chapter 76. Now, despite that, I am watching for potential reversal here for a trade. So if you look at this daily chart of the Japanese yen, remember I just showed you the weekly and monthly. You have a falling wedge. You have five waves here with MACD and RSI divergence. So if I can get a reversal here, it has potential for a trade, okay? But it needs to, it needs to go up. If it, it could easily just keep going down, but it is set up. Next, Trevor 77 FXY, that's the Japanese yen ETF. So that would be a way to play it. Here would be a measured move if it rallies right from here up to about 70. Next, moving to precious metals, Charber 78 gold. Unfortunately, you gold bugs, you had the double top back here early part of the year, and it has been down, down, down. Gold stocks have underperformed. Remember, they need to outperform. Not looking pretty. You do have another big support here to monitor, though, and 200 a week moving average. Clearly, the dollar has not helped, and the dollar would need to reverse. Next, Charber 79, here's gold on the daily just in the steep channel. Again, what I'm watching for, there is some divergence, but you wanna see this ratio curl up. 
You know, I need to see a reason to, for this stuff to reverse, and I don't see it yet. Next, Chiber 80, silver, weekly view. Lost this channel, it's now into this next zone. Next, Chiber 70, 81, here's silver on the daily, very similar look to gold, quite honestly. That bear flag played out. Next, Chiber 82, GDX. Now, I'm going to keep an eye on it this week, guys. GDX has melted down too. It's in a steep downtrend channel, no doubt about it. As Steve and I discussed, you want to see some sort of reversal here, okay? You want to see price. I mean, you could attempt a long off this doji with a stop, but ultimately you do want to see it break and hold above this channel line, this 9 EMA. You want to see some other triggers too, like this ratio trend line. You'd like to see this ratio break here. This BP GDM, that's with the... Eight EMA, you want to see this break over there. You can see it fell below its eight EMA here and it's been below it since. So that's some of the triggers I'd want to see for this stuff to confirm an up, you know, reversal. Next, Trevor 83, here's GDX six, uh, two hour view. You can see this tight channel I just discussed. Again, if it can get out of this channel and hold it, that would be a positive sign. Next, Trevor. 84 GDXJ, could you draw this potentially as a kind of a falling wedge pattern here? Possibly. But again, you want to see a reversal here. These are some ways to play this area if it does start to reverse. I would just focus on the ETFs, guys. GDX, GDXJ, and Chubber 85, SILJ. So I wouldn't mess with too many individual stocks in there. I'd just kind of look at these. So we'll see what this stuff does this week. Now let's go ahead and move on. And following up on a couple of trade ideas we had, chart 86, Qualcomm, long idea from last week, busted out of here. This is the initial target. Next, chart 87, Marvy was a bear flag short that we gave. Beautiful trade, take some profits. Next. Chiber 88 Apple has been on our watch list for a while. And, you know, it's been moving higher. It was a good buy, breaking this downtrend line here. By the way, earnings are the 28th, so they'll be the following week, right? On a wedge pattern, this could be a symmetry target up into this range. Next, Chiber 89 Amazon. This also has kind of a nice look to it. I favor an upside move. I'm long some of this too. This one reports on the 28th as well. Next, Trevor 90, Netflix. Believe it or not, Netflix actually looks decent here. It's been building a base here for two and a half months, three months, and you got a nice base here. Um, you know, it's certainly due just for some sort of dead cat bounce. I mean, it was 700 bucks back here in November. It's now 180. So, you know, if it just were to have a move up into this area, that would be a hell of a trade. Moving average ribbon is pinched, so energy is bent up, and it reports on the 19th. Next, Trevor 891, NVIDIA um, has a falling wedge here. We like it. By the way, follow the Pelosi's. I'm talking about Nancy Pelosi. You know, if you don't know who she is, then I don't know where you've been, but and her husband, they bought shares. There's some sort of semiconductor bill coming up. Like I said, Congress is well known. They do insider trading. Follow the money. Next, Trevor 92, NTAP. Long idea from last week, breaking out of a flag. Next, Trevor at 93, AFRM, trade idea from last week, trying to break this coil. Next, Trevor 94, pizza, Papa John's in a coil. Next, Trevor 95, Tesla, it's still in this overall pattern. Next, Trevor 96, FLGT, this still is interesting here over the 60 area. But again, I didn't try to... I basically just carried over the setups from last week, guys. I didn't want to add a bunch of new setups. You know, what I'd be focused on here is the indexes, those tight patterns, you know, that FXY. I would be looking at energy, biotech, um, Amazon, Netflix, things like that. Keep your trade list small at this point. Anyway, have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see where futures open here uh, later tonight. Looks like futures are... The weekend uh, betting futures indicate a flat open at the moment. Anyway, take care, guys.